Our Japanese guests come to us at a particularly important time for relations between our two countries. Business people are looking with great interest on uh, trade opportunities with the Japanese, and many of us have been watching news of the Tokyo Stock Exchange in the past several weeks and days, wondering if it will be subject to the same sort of swings that the American exchanges have been subject to recently, and wondering, I suppose, even more whether we are now having a global market rather than a, a group of national markets. Perhaps our guests can answer some of these questions. Mitsuya Goto uh, is Managing Director of the Japan Center for International Exchange and formerly General Manager of the International Division of the Nissan Motor Company. He, although born and raised in Japan, is very familiar with our country, having graduated from Wabash College in Indiana and done graduate work at Princeton University's Woodrow Wilson School of Public and International Affairs. He became Managing Director of Japan Center for International Exchange in March of 1987, but continues in a consulting capacity at Nissan. His topic will be implications for the U.S.-Japan economic relationship. Sachigo Taguchi is the International Secretary of the International Bureau of the Japan Democratic Social Party. Her topic will be foreign policies and international activities of the oppositional political parties. Dr. Yoshihida Soeya is Assistant Professor at Kaeo University's Faculty of Law. He too received part of his education in our country, having uh, received a PhD in political science from the University of Michigan. He has published a number of papers, including one on China policy of the Truman and Nixon administrations. His topic tonight is first, domestic and external sources of Jap a Japanese foreign policy, and second, a Japanese view on the, quote, Japan problem. We are pleased to have all three of these distinguished guests with us tonight to discuss Japan's international role in the changing world, and I am pleased to introduce them to you now. We each will speak for about 10 or 15 minutes, and we'll begin with Mr. Gota. <clears throat> Thank you, Sheila, for your generous uh, introduction. All three of us are uh, delighted to be <coughs> uh, in uh, Baltimore today and uh, to have this dialogue uh, with you. Uh, because, <coughs> uh, uh, and especially, uh, Ms. Taguchi and I are delighted to come back to Baltimore because, as <coughs> uh, Sheila said, uh, we were guest speakers at the Baltimore Council on Foreign Relations on April 1st, 1981. So we are delighted to be invited back. <coughs> uh, my uh, family name is uh, Goto, is spelled G-O-T-O. -O, so I always ask uh, you to remember me by go to some place. I think you know where I'm, I'm going to. Uh, or uh, I also have a nickname which is Skate. <coughs> and uh, only because some of the American friends of mine in the past have called me High Goat, although my, my family name was spelled G-O-A-T. And uh, so sometimes I go by the nickname of Scape, as in Scapegoat. <laughs> um, <clears throat> we uh, wanted to come back to Baltimore uh, or to the United States because, you know, nowadays we, you hear all about the imbalance in trade between the United States and Japan. And Japan has been uh, amassing such trade surplus. But when you look at the, the communications trade, I think the, the Japan has, has re always registered <coughs> red, red ink, meaning the deficit. Because we, we Japanese always tend to absorb so much information, so much knowledge from the United States and we do not return as much. So we, we, I always felt that the more of us who have <coughs> the language facility should come over here and establish a dialogue with, with, with you Americans. 
And I'm glad that uh, my own organization, <coughs> Japan Center for International Exchange, uh, is, uh, is now sponsoring our speaking tour of the United States. And uh, with the help of World Affairs Councils or, or uh, Council on Foreign Relations of various communities throughout the United States. And uh, before coming here, we were, we were the guests of the uh, new World Forum of Silicon Valley in uh, San Jose, California. And we, last night, we had the pleasure of addressing World Affairs Council of Washington, D.C., and, and now here. And from here, we go, go to Springfield, Massachusetts, and then on to Toledo, Ohio, and to Bowling Green University in Ohio. That will be our last stop. But we are really delighted to have this opportunity to establish a real dialogue <coughs> with you. You have been hearing a lot about uh, T. Boom Pickens uh, going over to Japan, <coughs> and uh, his uh, company, Mesa Petroleum, now has 26% of the Japanese company called Koito Manufacturing uh, Company, which is the manufacturers of lighting equipment, especially headlights for automobiles, and where the major uh, institutional investors are Toyota and Nissan, my former company. And uh, uh, T. Boone Pickens have been demanding that uh, now that his company has 26% of the Japanese company, that three of his men be placed on their board, and that the company also increase dividend payouts. But until recently, the Japanese company steadfastly refused to accept uh, any of his, his demand, but uh, finally came in to, to increase their dividend payouts, uh, but uh, still steadfastly refusing to place three of uh, Mr. Uh, Pickens' men on, on their board. Uh, I met uh, T. Boone Pickens uh, on one of his recent trips to Japan, and, and uh, he told me a story of a frog, <coughs> and which I, I would like to uh, relate to you. Uh, one day, there were, there were two women walking down the fashionable street in Houston, <coughs> and when they found a frog in the gutter, the frog said to, to them, that I used to be an oil man, but the spell was cast and I became a frog. Now, if, if one of you were to pick me up and kiss me, I'll be able to turn back into an oil man. So one of the women picked him up, <coughs> but instead of kissing him, uh, she put him in her purse, and, and they c continued down the street. After a while, this other woman got concerned and asked, why is it you, you didn't kiss him? <clears throat> and the other woman said, nowadays, a talking frog is worth more than an oil man. <laughs> <laughs> you have also been hearing a lot about the so-called uh, structural impediment uh, initiative negotiations that are going on between Washington and Tokyo. And currently, uh, there's a 60-man Japanese government delegation in Washington negotiating uh, <coughs> the deals uh, with, with uh, their counterpart uh, in Washington, especially those from the USTR's uh, office. And, and uh, as you know, the US side evidently has been demanding that uh, Japan change its even economic uh, structure. <coughs> and uh, on, on the side of the United States, there are something like 200 items uh, that uh, the US side would like uh, Jap Jap the Japanese sides to change. <coughs> uh, on the other hand, uh, in, in, including such demands as uh, that the Japanese government ought to increase uh, uh, public spending, especially public spending for infrastructure. I think that that demand is, uh, is uh, justified. Uh, uh, secondly, they're also asking that uh, remaining government rules be removed so that uh, even American department store chains can establish big department stores in Japan. Uh, that also demand is, I think, very much <coughs> very 
justified. Uh, and then uh, uh, they're also demanding that uh, uh, we Japanese spend more because we have, as you know, pension for personal savings. On the average, we save something like 16% of uh, annual income as against your 6 to 5 to 6 percent. So uh, American side has been saying that uh, we Japanese ought to become spendthrifts. Uh, <clears throat> uh, on the other hand, the Japanese side, I understand, now has something like 80 items uh, that, that uh, the, uh, we would like uh, the Americans to, to, to change. Uh, uh, foremost on that list, of course, is the demand that the uh, U.S. does something about uh, their twin deficit, you know, your budget, federal budget deficit and the big, big trade uh, deficit. Uh, the Japanese side also demanding that perhaps the U.S. industry could improve its productivity and efficiency, etc. So in some ways, <coughs> uh, you know, these negotiators are talking this way, and uh, I think there's a feeling both <clears throat> on the U.S. side and uh, in Japan that uh, we are trying to get into the domestic affairs of each other's uh, country. I'm reminded in this regard of a story of an admiral of the fleet. <clears throat> One day, an ensign on his flagship was watching a radar screen, and he saw a small blip. <clears throat> so he shouted, we are on a collision course. You change course. And the voice came back and saying, you change course. And this went on for a while, and they were getting nowhere. Uh, in fact, uh, the title of uh, my, my talk uh, this, this afternoon is supposed to be the, the implications of U.S.-Japan trade uh, uh, are we on the collision course? But uh, unfortunately, uh, Sheila did not <laughs> tell you that was the title of my talk. But anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, the ensign uh, finally reported this back to the admiral, who now had the microphone in his hand. And he said, <clears throat> I am the admiral of the fleet. Whoever you are, you change course. And the voice came back in saying, doggone it, I'm the lighthouse. You change course. <laughs> well, I, I think uh, we've been hearing some harsh rhetoric, uh, <clears throat> but uh, uh, I was really surprised to read in the Japanese newspaper <clears throat> uh, called, called Nihon Keizai Shimbun, which is Japan's Wall Street Journal last week, uh, which conducted a public opinion poll and found that uh, 80 percent, some 80 percent of the Japanese poll felt that the U.S. demands are <clears throat> beginning to be justified and, and that the Japanese government should have taken initiative long ago to remove some of the remaining uh, trade uh, barriers or non-tariff barriers. Uh, as, as many as 60 uh, some percent of the Japanese also felt <coughs> that uh, uh, Japan ought to let American rice, you know, good California rice, come into Japan bit by bit, <coughs> despite the fact that our government has been saying no. Uh, and, and, and uh, of course, U.S. has also been demanding, uh, demanding that uh, <coughs> Uh, we break up the kind of keiretsu, so-called keiretsu companies. You know, a lot of industrial groups have uh, their own affiliates and uh, subsidiaries. And it, the American side say that it is difficult to, to break up, break into Japanese market, <coughs> etc. But anyway, this is another demand. And uh, uh, also something like 40 some part percent of the Japanese being polled uh, replied that uh, most of the U American demands are ju justified. And I was really surprised that the public sentiment <coughs> in, 
in Japan has, has, has changed uh, somewhat uh, because this is all uh, going to be for the benefit of Japanese consumer, with, I, I think. Uh, in Japan, as you know, for a long time, silence has been considered to be more of a virtue. <clears throat> and as a result, uh, Japanese consumers e never ever banded together and uh, uh, be uh, <clears throat> uh, protested, uh, has, has never protested against the uh, high price of this and that. So I think uh, if our government were to remove some of these uh, remaining regulations and uh, non-tariff barriers kind of things, I think, I think uh, it would be all benefit to the benefit of Japanese consumers. In the <clears throat> private sector, I might want to say uh, there are still, there's still awful lot of goodwill because I personally can say so because I have long been associated with the Japanese auto industry and uh, all the Japanese automakers uh, have been really bending backwards in wanting to buy more manufactured goods from the United States, uh, including auto parts and materials that go into to, uh, ca cars, and uh, either as an OEM or uh, as a replacement parts. <clears throat> and uh, uh, Nissan also recently started buying uh, computer chips from Intel. Uh, Nissan already bought two Cray supercomputers, and Nissan also started buying uh, uh, Timken bearings. Uh, and uh, uh, as a result, uh, if you look at the trade statistics, the uh, percentage of uh, manufactured goods in our imports uh, increased, has increased uh, uh, substantially in the last few years. Uh, especially, <clears throat> uh, I, I think the rate of increase has been sharper from uh, some, of the, some of our Asian neighbors. Uh, but uh, imports of manufactured goods from the United States also has, has increased uh, substantially in the last few years. Uh, I'm also glad to <clears throat> say to you that uh, uh, a lot of Japanese companies have practiced uh, what is known as the export substitution kind of uh, investment uh, in North America or elsewhere in the world. Uh, and in order to, <clears throat> you know, part of their effort to, to reduce this trade imbalance. And uh, I, for one, uh, from 1974 to 1981, uh, was in charge of Nissan's uh, U.S. investment project. <clears throat> and I did all negotiations with governors of different states and leading to the selection of Smyrna, Tennessee, at the site of Nissan's uh, uh, major investment. And uh, uh, by now, Nissan has invested over $1 billion in Smyrna, Tennessee. And uh, 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 in 1980, we hired an American, uh, who, uh, Marvin Runyon was his name, uh, uh, who was then uh, Vice President Body and Assembly Ford Motor Company to run Nissan's U.S. manufacturing operation. Uh, only because <clears throat> he said to us uh, that uh, he would be willing to take on the Japanese challenge and by having the best of both worlds, meaning the best of traditional American management philosophy and the best of Japanese management philosophy, you know, uh, we tend to regard everybody as though he uh, or she were a member of the Nissan family. <clears throat> and that kind of management philosophy, uh, he felt that uh, uh, his people can produce the highest quality vehicles sold in North America. That was the way he put it. And, and uh, today, Nissan uh, employs <clears throat> about 4,000 people in, in Tennessee and ha has only 13 Japanese there in, in the middle, only in middle levels. <clears throat> and uh, and uh, so successful, uh, and, and, and Nissan is producing uh, 240,000 
uh, pickups and also uh, Sentra models a year. But the production will, will output will go up to 440,000 uh, fairly shortly. And Nissan also built an engine plant uh, on site. Uh, so successful uh, uh, that uh, Marvin Runyon was in managing this uh, company that a couple of years ago, President Reagan tapped him to be uh, chairman of the Trouble TVA, where he is doing also a bang up job. <coughs> uh, so I, for one, uh, am very pleased with Nissan's uh, investment in the United States, <coughs> and I'm glad that the Nissan made it home, their home in Tennessee. I'm sorry it wasn't Maryland, but uh, uh, <coughs> I have also been helping uh, a number of American companies break the Japanese market, and I uh, for years, I used to buy uh, Black, and, Black, and, Black and Decker power tools whenever I came to the, this country because it was cheaper, certainly, here, and I would always take them back to Japan. <coughs> um, over the years, I know there are some Westinghouse people in the audience. <coughs> uh, I'm also very happy to say that uh, in my previous incarnation at Nissan, I always <coughs> uh, was glad to take a uh, uh, lot of Westinghouse people through our, one of our manufacturing plants near Tokyo and have discussions with our top management people, especially in terms of uh, so-called quality control circles and uh, quality, <coughs> some of the quality programs that the Nissan is putting in. Uh, Finally, <clears throat> I want to say a little bit about the Japan Center for International Exchange, uh, which has been in existence uh, something like uh, uh, 20 years now under the leadership of uh, our current president, Tadashi Yamamoto. Uh, we have been organizing a U.S.-Japan dialogue, which is called the uh, U.S.-Japan Shimoda Conference. We've been sponsoring Euro-Japan Hakone Conference. We've been the sponsor, uh, in fact, the Japan Committee for the Trilateral Commission. So we help the uh, Trilateral Commission organize their annual conferences. Uh, we have, in more recent years, trying to organize dialogue with leaders of the ASEAN countries. And uh, in the last 15 years, we've been practicing uh, congressional and parliamentary exchanges between the United States and Japan. <clears throat> Each year we bring to Japan your senators and congressmen. Uh, last year the group included your own congressman, uh, Tom McMillan. You know, hard to miss him because he's so, so tall. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, I was with him uh, for about a week, <clears throat> and during which he met uh, and dined with our prime minister uh, we arranged meetings uh, with other uh, Japanese political leaders, business leaders, etc. And uh, we, we really enjoy this part of uh, <coughs> uh, uh, our program. And we also have been bringing to the United States uh, Japanese diet members, regardless of party affiliations. <laughs> and uh, <coughs> our center, uh, beginning about three years ago, has conducted a uh, survey report which is entitled Strengthening the Regional Underpinnings of U.S.-Japan Partnership. Initially, we, uh, we had a small grant from the U.S.-Japan Friendship Commission in Washington. Initially, we covered four states, chose four states in the U.S., uh, uh, namely Indiana, North Carolina, Tennessee, and Georgia, and uh, seven prefectures in Japan. And second time around, we uh, uh, chose seven additional states, some states that have had very little to do with Japan, like Maine, Mississippi, and uh, Iowa, et cetera. And then uh, big states such as Commonwealth of Virginia and Texas and Kentucky, Colorado uh, were included. And in each one of these states, we went to the local uh, Japanologist uh, type, Japan specialist, uh, especially at the local university. And we asked them to cover three major fields. 
One is the effect of Japan's direct investment in, in the states and their local effect, good and bad, and how far the U.S.-Japan partnership had gone at the grassroots level. Number two, we had them identify uh, colleges and universities or even some high schools where something about Japan is being taught and by whom. <clears throat> and then also identify colleges and universities that had ties with Japanese universities and what's being done there. And number three, we asked them to, to identify sister city ties. You know, some communities in uh, Maryland would have uh, uh, sister city relations. I don't know Baltimore is a sister city in, in, in Japan. Uh, <clears throat> and and uh, some are inactive, some only exchange mayors, but some are quite active, promoting even homestays of citizens of both communities and things of this sort. And all other interaction, such as the activities of uh, uh, Council on Foreign Relations or Japan-America societies, etc. And, and, and the <clears throat> overall, our researchers found that the, at the grassroots level in, in America, the American sentiment toward Japan is still quite positive <clears throat> and, and that more and more Americans are interested in things Japanese. Although in the, in the recent round of surveys, it was al also found that some Americans are beginning to harbor certain fear of Japan because Japan seemed to be buying up all of America or something. Uh, <clears throat> I, 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 in, in, I, I want to say that, uh, <clears throat> you know, since Japan and the United States are now two, le two largest economies in the free world, <clears throat> we have, our economies have become so much intertwined and that, uh, uh, you know, this harsh rhetoric that's being heard between Washington and uh, Tokyo should not harm otherwise healthy economic uh, relations uh, between the two, two countries. Uh, we have so much, I think, at stake, <clears throat> and uh, we, 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 we can do so much together, especially as we look uh, toward the frontiers of the 21st century. I think uh, our partnership is really important, especially in dealing with our Japan's Asian neighbors and also uh, in view of the new developments in in uh, East, in Soviet Union and also in Eastern Europe, uh, and I, ho I hope, <coughs> certainly hope that uh, Japan and the United States can maintain partnerships in the future, because as uh, Ambassador, former Ambassador Mansfield to Japan used to say, uh, there is no more important bilateral bilateral relationship between. <coughs> uh, uh, than the, the one between the United States and Japan, and, uh, and uh, bar, bar, barring none. And I, I certainly hope that uh, we can maintain these ties of friendship and uh, <coughs> partnership in the future. Thank you. Well, uh, maybe I better a little bit that the, uh, uh, explain about my own, the, how to say, uh, careers. The, I, Yes, my first uh, the visit of the United States was uh, 1967. The, I studied about the, the Jewish socialist movement in Japan, and I visited Israel. And because of the Jewish affairs might be, I could get a scholarship from Harvard. And uh, it was really unusual you know, case for the Japanese uh, the girl to come to the United States alone. I took an airplane from uh, Haneda Airport. At that time, the Naita Airport was not exist. And uh, not by Japan Airlines, but uh, Pan American. And uh, in the flight, the, I, I, you know, my English is still not good, but uh, at that time, yes, I, I was very bad. And then students came to me, maybe she asked me, yes, which you like to eat? chicken or steak or something like that. And uh, then uh, my English was so, you know, bad, so I just said, he, she, she couldn't understand me. So I said, yes, same thing, just uh, somebody has. And it was first time I tasted steak. Then 
uh, it, then you know steak was so how to say uh, delicious, and uh, I, I took my notebook, I put on the uh, record. Yes, now I had the steak. This is America, and then the uh, via San Francisco, the uh, I, you know, arrived at the uh, Boston. It takes about uh, nine hours at that time, I think. And another my culture shock was how huge country this is. Because uh, you know, our, we are in the island. From the uh, northern part to the southern part of the uh, Japan, it takes about two hours only. And then the, uh, in, in the Boston, the, I was took to the uh, student union, the restaurant. Another culture shock came to me. The, I had the first time to taste the yogurt. And I asked that the, uh, you know, my American friends, how to make it? And, well, that night I put on my notebook. I had the yogurt. This is America. And next morning I went to the uh, union, the uh, student union restaurant. Another culture shock came. But I had that the uh, pancake with honey. The honey was so sweet. And uh, I, this this was also a culture shock. I put on my notebook and said, "Well, yes, this is America. Hon pancake with honey." And I, I wrote that, you know, almost every day to my parents, to my friends about the food of uh, America. And uh, at that time, I didn't and I couldn't the, imagine how the, uh, you know, the Japan will be in future. And all the time we admire the America. America is uh, everything, yes? And uh, in the, uh, uh, you know, Silicon Valley, where we visited before to be here, yes, after, I mean, before the Washington. The, uh, we were, you know, invited by the American friend to the uh, sushi restaurant, sushi bar, yes? And uh, the, uh, uh, my American friend said, yes, now the Mr. Taguchi, yes, these days that uh, we are very much fond of the sushi. Okay, good. And why don't you uh, the, uh, taste it? Yes, I tasted the sushi by the uh, uh, California rice. My political part, my part, I'll, I'll come to later, but my part officially, we are very much opposing to import that the, um, any, you know, the, uh, how to say, piece of American rice. But I, 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 my honest feeling was, it's really delicious. And then, the, uh, afterward, the, I just asked, yes, maybe, yes, rice is such a, you know, delicious. You have a, a sake of uh, the California rice. Yes, we have. And and then my friend kindly, yes, ordered for me. And uh, Jap uh, California, wine, uh, um, California rice of the sake, yes. Very delicious. So, uh, you know, the, uh, we Japanese, yes, uh, did not know the, a lot of food, like a steak or yogurt or, you know, pancake of hon with honey. Uh, but um, the, uh, many of the uh, uh, food were presented by the occupation policy. Uh, you know, this is a, uh, Mr. Goto, yes, uh, he introduced that, uh, a very nice joke, but uh, um, mine is not a joke. This is a really, you know, how to say, fact. Uh, the, uh, you know, I, I was told by the uh, uh, rather old age of the people, the uh, General MacArthur, he kindly, you know, delivered the uh, small portion of the butter to the uh, all, you know, families. At that time, that the, we did not have any bread. Without bread, yes, how they did to use that. The, uh, you know, lady put for the hair. Because no oil for the hair at that time. And, and also they put for the, uh, you know, face, the, the butter, yes. So uh, this, this was, those are, you know, how to say, a story how many of Japanese people still have the uh, good image of the uh, good American. And uh, uh, yes, uh, my mother was the member of the Communist Party. And uh, I'm member of the Democratic Socialist Party. But after the, you know, I sent a lot of the letters written about the American food to my mother, she changed that the, her party from communist to the lefting socialist party. <laughs> yes, this is a not joke. I'm seriously yes. 
But, uh, you know, the very unfortunately for my mother, the uh, Japan Socialist Party is the biggest opposition political party, parties, but still there, you know, how to say, uh, 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 believing Marxism or Leninism. And uh, this is the uh, political party not to, how to say, accept the uh, security treaty between Japan and the United States. We have the uh, four the uh, opposition political parties in Japan. Number one is the Japan Socialist Party, I said. And the second one is the uh, Buddhist Party, we call Kome Party. Then our party, Democratic Socialist Party, and lastly, the Japan Communist Party. We still have a Communist Party in Japan. I think they will have enough uh, problems, yes, after the Mr. Gorbachev said such, no more communism. They have to change the name, maybe. Well, uh, among the four the opposition political parties, that the only my party has been the, uh, good for the uh, United States. That's why maybe I was invited this time. Uh, so uh, uh, the, if the, uh, any opportunity for the opposition, the bloc, the, uh, to be a governing of the, of the Japanese uh, politics, I think a relationship between Japan and United States would be not easy. Already we are not really easy, but more, you know, how to say, uh, a hard day will come. But very fortunately the, uh, for the relations, the we oppositions, I'm sorry to say it such, but uh, we have very, you know, small possibility to take, uh, you know, power in the government. After the World War II, the, uh, uh, yes, now the nearly 45 years, I, I think uh, never happened in the world, in the history of the politics in the world, having the, you know, single party has been monopolizing the uh, power. And, uh, but just happened last year in June that we had that the upper house elections. And uh, first time in uh, political history in Japan, the uh, opposition bloc, we could win we could get the majority. And, and then, very unfortunately, now the uh, February of this year, we had the lower house election, just general election. Again, conservative party could get victory. That's why Mr. Kaifu is still member, mem uh, prime minister. And uh, now a little bit, yes, I have to, Finish another three minutes, maybe. Uh, well, I, I, I can, you know, very the, uh, easily understand the, how the American people frustrated. Not only American people, many of the, uh, how to say, people outside of Japan, they are very much frustrated because Jap Jap Japan became, a, you know, big power economically. Previous time that if you say the uh, good watch that's made in Swiss, if you say that the good camera, yes, made in Germany, now the, uh, you know, the good uh, the watch made in Japan, Seiko or Citizen or something else. And the good camera, if you say that the, yes, uh, Minoruta or Canon made in Japan. And if the car, yes, maybe United States, but now the Honda or Nissan or Toyota. And maybe, the uh, ladies' fashions, yes, if uh, you say yes. Previous time, at, I think uh, maybe France. More people very much appreciate that the, uh, from Paris or from maybe from New York. But nowadays more f by the Japanese designers. So almost all the, uh, in the field of the, uh, you know, the market, the uh, Japanese, uh, we, not myself, but the, uh, we, we took the, uh, how to say, initiative. But, uh, you know, the, uh, Japan is the, uh, enough of the big power economically, but I must say that the uh, really uh, handicapped big power. Not 100% we are big power yet. The, we have enough problems of the uh, housing and uh, also uh, 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 land system. These days, many of Japanese tourists used to come to the United States also. They are coming to New York and uh, bring back the, uh, 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 you know, camera as a souvenir because the price of a camera is really cheaper here in the United States compared with the 
uh, the price where we can buy in, in Tokyo. And uh, also steak, yes. My miracle image of steak to uh, America. Yes, the price of steak is the, uh, you know, uh, I think uh, if we have a dinner of the steak in Japan that takes about, to uh, $60, $70. So, uh, you know, full, yes, <laughs> but, uh, you know, the, those who uh, experienced it here in the United States, how cheaper price, many of Japanese people started to frustrate it. What's happened to our government? So uh, I think uh, not by our own, the, how to say, uh, effort of the opposition political parties, but uh, as a result of the frustration of the people maybe politics will be changed. This is my, you know, optimistic uh, views. And uh, I, the, uh, finally, the, I, I think, uh, uh, the, uh, you know, this uh, the lunchtime, yes, we, uh, we are also be in the meeting of the uh, foreign affairs, yes, in Washington. We got a lot of questions from the so-called expert about Japan. How to do Japan? You, you have uh, enough money, how to use it? And my answer is such, yes. Of course, we have a, yes, a certain, a, a big amount of the money. But uh, as the uh, taxpayer uh, of Japan, yes, we are very unhappy about the, uh, you know, for the negotiation with the Washington, you're coming the 60 bureaucrats here. This is a waste of money. That, that's a view of the, uh, you know, how to say, uh, opposition, the uh, parties. Uh, and, uh, I must say that the, uh, you know, Japan should be the uh, a big power to contribute for the peace in the world. And uh, it's really, you know, uh, how to say, sorry for the Asian people. We are spending a lot, lot of money and the time, yes, just talking, I'm sorry, say just, but just talking with the Washington. We have to spend more our attention, we have to spend more our money for the Asia and other third world. There are more people, more children are waiting, yes, what we have to do. So Japan should be a big power to contribute, I wish to repeat, contribute to the peace in the world. That's my the message to you. Thank you very much. Uh, well, in fact, that year, I, after finishing my master's uh, uh, program, I just started my PhD program at the University of Michigan in 1981, but it, I'm, I'm very happy that uh, through uh, probably many coincidences, but uh, that I could uh, come over here and share experiences and views uh, with not only American people, but also with uh, Mr. Goto and Ms. Taguchi, as you have uh, noticed already, uh, well, they have quite different views, and I may also propose, uh, present uh, a different uh, view from them. And I think this is a proof that Japan Incorporated is probably a myth. <laughs> and that, that is uh, uh, one of the assertions that I'd like to spread uh, outside of Japan, because that myth is not good uh, not only to Japan, but also to the rest of the world. But, but uh, again, to prove that Japan is now uh, undergoing a change, significant change probably, even though the pace is very slow. And I would like to explain the reasons for that uh, later. But to, to prove that, I'd like to start my speech, I've already uh, done this, but uh, by presenting another uh, amusing story, uh, rather than by making excuses, as many Japanese do when they uh, start their speech. Uh, well, uh, there, there was a boat floating in the ocean, and the water started to leak into the boat and the captain had to save uh, the passengers' lives. And there were a British, an American, yeah, one of those jokes, a British, an American, and a French, and a Japanese. And captain first turned to the British and said, okay, jump into the water. I've got to save your life. Jump into the water. It's a sporting thing to do. And the British jumped into the water immediately. And then turned to the French and said, I hope nobody f is from the French embassy or something from here, but uh, <clears throat> I, I didn't invent this joke. So. <laughs> well, turned to the French and said, don't jump into the water. 
and the friend jumped into the water. Uh, oh, <laughs> and then turned to an American, you, and said to you, jump into the water, don't worry, you are insured, okay? <laughs> and finally turned to a Japanese passenger and said to him or her, jump into the water, don't worry, everybody else did it, and, and the Japanese just jumped into the water. Okay, I'll, I'll become serious from <laughs> here. In the post-war period, uh, well, uh, it is not a laughing matter. Uh, this joke is not a laughing matter for, for Japan because uh, that, uh, to a certain extent, uh, tells how the post-war Japanese diplomacy now has been conducted. And when Japan had to decide a major uh, uh, shift in policy or initiate something, the first thing, in, in many of the cases, I'm not saying it applies to every case, but in many cases, the first thing Japanese would like to do is to look around uh, outside of Japan and would try to find a, probably creatively sometimes, but sometimes just, just responsibly, uh, to cope with uh, the international environment surrounding Japan. And I think that propensity still uh, remains today, despite the fact that Japan's international uh, uh, e existence has become more and more prominent, and Japan is now indeed giving a significant influence on the world as a whole. Despite that fact, I think that mentality or propensity uh, is still there uh, in, in Japan. And I think that is causing a, a little bit of misunderstanding and, and problems. Uh, for Japan as well as for the relationship between Japan and the United States. Um, but uh, what I would like to emphasize is that that tendency was probably a wise uh, uh, policy. To, to, to use that tendency was probably a wise thing for, for the post-war Japan uh, because Japan started from scratch after the devastation of the war. And the United States, of course, started its post-war diplomacy from the number one position bar noun, right? <laughs> and, uh, uh, and, and it was, in, in fact, a probably, one, one, probably the only realistic alternative left to the, the, to the government of Japan uh, to get along with, with the United States and to sometimes uh, probably too much obediently uh, obey uh, the course laid out by the United States in Asia. But what is changing today is, of course, uh, that kind of assumption held by uh, many people outside of Japan. And many Japanese are now, of course, starting to have a new perception uh, about Japanese foreign policy. And some, uh, some have gone, I think, too much uh, extreme. Uh, but uh, they are now wanting to have its own sort of uh, autonomous uh, diplomacy. And, and some wise politicians, such as Mr. Ishihara, uh, can take advantage of that uh, sentiment uh, in Japan and solicit more political support for him. And of course, on the basis of uh, a, a, a controversial but uh, parochial to me uh, convictions, sometimes called nationalism. And Okay, so much, we don't have much time, so so much for the international context. And I'd like to add to that the domestic aspect of Japan's foreign policy making and come up to a Japanese perception of the Japan problem. And the, domestically speaking, there are, of course, many important elements. But uh, if you pick one, uh, I tend to, I'm inclined to emphasize the importance of the overused concept of consensus in the Japanese uh, uh, political system not only political system, but in the uh, in, in social system as a whole. But especially in the policy-making process, I think consensus is still uh, playing an important role. And consensus in the Japanese context does not mean that everybody agrees, does not mean that uh, the fact that consensus was formed does not mean that everybody is in full support of a decided uh, course of action, but rather a consensus means that 
everybody was everybody concerned was consulted in the process and everybody had some say uh, in the process and once you are heard and one, once you think that your face was to, to a certain extent saved then uh, what is most likely is that nobody uh, tries to sabotage or obstruct the implementation process of a reached decision. And, and there are issues uh, about which consensus is easily formed. Uh, there are other issues uh, uh, concerning which consensus is very difficult uh, uh, to be formed. And, and Japan was lucky in a sense in the post-war period that all it had to do basically was economic uh, recovery. And thanks to your generous umbrella, given not only in terms of security uh, sense, but also in terms of the economic sense, opening up your market for uh, Japanese junk uh, products uh, in, in the 50s or 60s, uh, Japan succeeded in its economic recovery tremendously. And in the course of its economic uh, recovery, Japan developed, I think, uh, elements of which uh, you can find from the pre-war uh, period. Japan developed a strategy which value more than consumers, the producers, right? And, and, and the government and the business partnership was clearly there and a strong one. And I think that's becoming weaker these days. And, and, uh, and because of that uh, strategy, Japan succeeded very much. But what is very difficult for Japan today is that Japan is being asked not only by the United States, but by many of the countries in the world to change that very strategy which has led uh, to a post-war success of Japan. To value more consumers would mean a drastic change in Japan's post-war strategy. Because we, we are not used to uh, that kind of course in, in the Japanese system. And we are now trying to do that. And of course, uh, there are very important elements which would not like to see that to happen because that threatens uh, their vested interest in the old, already established system. But still, uh, given the fact that Japan's international position has changed dramatically today, from uh, that of the 50s and 60s. Japan's got to change that strategy. Otherwise, Japan cannot maintain its uh, influence and, and, and international position, which somehow came unexpectedly, probably, to most of the Japanese as a result of its uh, becoming an economic uh, power uh, in the world. So uh, there, the necessity to change is very clear cut. So, Explicit in the question of the so-called Japan problem is uh, the perception that Japan will never be able to change. And, and I think, uh, I understand the sense of frustration behind that perception because uh, Japan is an extremely, uh, well, in, in Japanese society, it is extremely difficult uh, to uh, change the course, uh, partly because of uh, the role of consensus uh, in the Japanese domestic system. And to change the very strategy which has led to uh, the success of the entire nation, I think it is quite difficult to form a consensus on that uh, particular uh, aspect. And it might be difficult for any country. I, I am not trying to cover up the problem that Japan has today. I am saying in order for Japan to become more reliable international player, it, it has to change some of its domestic uh, problems. There is no question about that. But the, my point is just talking about Japan's problems as being unfair, I think would not lead to a satisfactory solution at all. And it would m more likely uh, probably lead to the rise of dissatisfied, dissatisfied uh, elements in the Japanese societies, uh, society, which can easily uh, associate uh, themselves with uh, the nationalism. And I, I, I'm afraid to say that that, that may be happening in, in Japan now. But uh, to call, well, for example, k rate system, which Mr. Goto introduced, uh, the, or the distribution system, 
they are regarded uh, widely outside of Japan as being unfair uh, for the free competition, right? And, and, and I, I myself uh, am a bit disturbed uh, by uh, you calling that particular aspect uh, being unfair because my understanding is that distribution system was not int introduced in Japan for the purpose of excluding outsiders. Distribution system was there from the beginning of the post-war period, or even before, even from before the post-war. Uh, and the K-rate system was there, and even before the war, of course, since before the war. And, and it was okay for Japan to maintain those system, uh, uh, systems, as far as Japan remained an insignificant uh, international entity, probably. But as a result of Japan, Japan becoming more prominent and more influential, those systems are now called uh, into question. So my perspective on the Japan problem is Japan's got to deal with the problem not because they are unfair, those problems are unfair, but because those problems are hindering uh, Japan's playing more reliable, responsible international role. And it's a lot easier f uh, for us to convince the Japanese public by the second logic rather than by the first logic. I mean, we've got to do this because Americans are saying this. That's ex that, that is becoming extremely hard, hard uh, these days to say. But if you say to the Japanese uh, public that to play this sort of international role for the sake of all the world system, for the rest of the people, we've got to change this part of the domestic system. That's, uh, I think, a lot easier. Uh, t to do, I even for the Japanese government. If that is the case, I'm, I'm critical about the current uh, framework in which uh, SII, Strategic Impediments Initiative talks, are carried out, which is uh, the talks are done strictly in the bilateral framework. And your rationale for asking Japan to change is basically because they are unfair, right? Because Americans can cannot compete on a fair ground. And that logic might appeal to you very much, but uh, because of the reason that I gave, uh, that doesn't appeal to the Japanese uh, very much. But I, I think it's a wise policy on the part of the Japan, uh, American government to emphasize the consumers, and that's a wise strategy. And that, that is uh, giving an impact on the Japanese consumers, as uh, Mr. Goto introduced. Japanese are welcoming uh, American requests. But uh, that's a foreign pressure is a double-edged sword, of course, always. And so I, my hope is that uh, whether we can establish a framework in which we talk about Japan's international role between Japan and the United States, or maybe including Asian friends, and, and we talk about what Japan can do, and for that purpose, what Japan should do domestically, uh, that, that sort of uh, discussions would be, I think, more and more useful. Uh, uh, given the current situation of our relationship. And we cannot sacrifice the, 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 of our current relationship, of course, for not only ourselves, but for the rest of the world. It, it's too, it has become too important, too intertwined. And some people would like to call economic relations between Japan and the United States as being in a mad situation. Mad being mutual assured destruction the concept used to describe the uh, uh, security relations between uh, the United States and the Soviet Union. And, and, and I think it, it is true that we are in probably a mad situation. If we break up, we will be mutually destroyed. <laughs> and its uh, repercussions on the rest of the countries uh, are going to be enormous, of course. So I think we've got to do something creatively. Thank you very much.